So my name is Bojan, and uh, in this talk I'm going to present uh, how to build uh, Debian-based uh, sy embedded systems or products um, using Debian and Bitbake. So um, the plan is our motivation, where we started, why we develop, <coughs> developed the whole thing at all, um, a brief introduction on either, either how we do this, um, there are a couple of slides um, about the mechanisms. I don't think we will have time for that today, but I included this for a reference so that you know what to look in the documentation. Um, and uh, a couple of news um, since our last presentation on Embedded Linux Conference. Okay, so where we started, uh, we wanted to build a product and we knew that we are going to use Debian as a base system for this project. Actually, uh, this was back in 2004, and uh, I don't remember whether um, Open Embedded existed at that time. At least I was not using it then. So what we needed, uh, we needed to have a Debian system and um, produce complete bootable um, file system and firmware images. So it, it means including U-boot and kernel and so on. There should be binary Debian packages used and there should be our own application packages uh, that are going to be included um, on the system. What we also wanted is um, one command on-demand image creation. And what we also didn't want is to touch every upstream package. And at the end, um, after this uh, is a product, we want to build an older version of some snapshot um, afterwards. There are some further requirements um, how to handle the whole thing. So we want uh, to be able to customize upstream packages if you want to. We want to build several products from one repository because they are, for example, similar or share components. And we also would like to incorporate um, upstream code from um, software or hardware vendors um, in the repository. And we have to maintain this uh, for at least 10 years. So uh, if we look today at the existing art, basically we have uh, binary distributions and source distributions. So Debian is a uh, typical binary distribution where you get um, pre-compiled binary packages uh, and you can use them right away. Uh, Yocto, on the other hand, is a typical source-based distribution where you get the whole sources and you have to build them yourself first um, in order to use them. So to, uh, I'm not going to go through this whole table and uh, also please don't take it uh, very literally. It's uh, really an oversimplification to give you a feeling um, in which direction um, every project goes. Uh, but uh, to summarize, uh, Debian has many standard tools, is tested as a whole distribution, which is important for us, has clear licensing, long-term maintenance or, well, relatively, um, depending on the definition of long-term, um, and fits small products or the whole product lines. Uh, regarding Yocto, in Yocto we also have clear licensing. We have um, Bitbake, that is a single comment um, integration tool, uh, which is very flexible and uh, efficient. Uh, and we have collaboration policy in form of layers uh, so that uh, 
uh, software pieces could be grouped together according to some criteria. Also, last but not least, uh, one difference between them is that um, Debian focuses on certain pre-selected um, architectures. Uh, for example, if you take ARM, then um, only two of them are currently available, and uh, with ARM CPUs you have a wide range of uh, optimizations that uh, could be important for you. So with Debian you only have two grades of uh, freedom, uh, whereas with Yocto, after it is source-based, you can fine-tune your build uh, for your required um, CPU capabilities. So what is Isar? It started uh, 2004 as a uh, bunch of shell scripts. Of course, with the time, we saw that it's very difficult to maintain it, um, and we switched to BitBay. First off, um, Isar is not a distribution and is not a distribution builder. So we just enable to use Debian base Debian distribution as a base system for our product, and we have some mechanisms to build our own um, applications and install it uh, into the firmware image. And we also um, like uh, basically the structure and workload, uh, workflow of the Yocto project, uh, how they organize their, their directories, and we also um, use this in ISA. So this is what we do and what we don't. Basically, we uh, reuse binary packages from Debian because they are tested, because they uh, have security updates, um, and uh, because we don't want to rebuild them, them every time. And we use Bitbake, the tool behind Yocto, um, to uh, bring the whole thing together. And we have, uh, like in Debian, we have distributed source repositories. And like in Yocto, we have centralized metadata repositories. We want also to change as little as possible and to build as little as possible. This means we try to really reuse um, Debian packages and only where we have to, then we uh, modify them or uh, build our own applications. So this is uh, how we, uh, this is an example how we did this uh, in this particular product. Uh, we used Debian packages as is. We modified some small amount. We built it them once and uh, saved for future use. So we used them also pre-built. We also built our own U-boot once and used it as a, as a binary. And the rest we rebuild every time because um, it changes often. This is a, an error also in this slide, U-boot. We don't rebuild, rebuild U-boot um, every time. I took it um, above. So kernel drivers, libs, and applications uh, we rebuild every time. So how does it work? Yeah. Do we have a pointer? No, we don't. Point. Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so first, we create a build change route. Uh, this is a change route, is a Debian installation uh, where we build our packages um, that are uh, needed, like our applications. Then we build, actually build these packages there, like uh, in this example in hello git, in this build change route. So this build change route uh, in current implementation, it is um, an ARM change route and we run it uh, with uh, QEMU and build the packages uh, with a standard DPKG build package uh, toolset. After that, after all, uh, 
packages are built, we uh, call um, Multistrap again to create a root file system. Then we install the packages that we built there and uh, create uh, a bootable, complete um, firmware image containing also U-boot, kernel, and rootfs. So this uh, simple five steps, and they are all um, incorporated uh, in one command, uh, like we know from Bjorkto. So uh, how we build images, we uh, clone our repository, uh, we initialize the build environment, and we create an image. So if you look inside, basically the whole thing um, consists of uh, five um, files, uh, so-called recipes, and these recipes um, do each um, every small step, like build change root uh, prepares the change root only, and hello BB is responsible for building the hello application, um, and either image base and debug are um, recipes for building the whole images. Uh, these recipes uh, consist of tasks and order, build order is defined uh, by task dependencies. Uh, and performance is achieved uh, for one hand uh, for, on using um, uh, binary packages and on the other hand uh, through parallel execution of uh, these tasks. The whole thing is organized in two layers. The layer meta um, is a, a core layer and uh, it provides basic functionality like uh, build change root. And uh, uh, meta isa is the product template layer so that uh, uh, you can copy this template uh, to your own project and modify files there. So this is um, how it uh, is organized. You see here two metas. The meta uh, core is going to be pulled from time to time uh, from our site when it is updated and your meta product, uh, you modify it once and maintain them. Uh, you don't update it. And you see that uh, your application, hello, and your images are in uh, your meta product, and here you can see, for example, dependencies between the tasks which define the order how the whole thing will be built. So how you create your project? You clone either, you push it as your own repo, uh, you define your product images, add packages, and add boards. Images um, are defined is in, in their um, respective recipes, so that uh, you have a copy of your recipe, uh, of your product recipe, and you can customize it. For example, if you want to install more packages in your uh, target rootfs, then you say uh, you modify the image pre-install variable uh, inside it, and say, okay, I want to have apt, and I want to have open SSH server, and so on. Um, you also might want to provide images with more functionality, for example, uh, for two different products um, or for debugging or development tools. In this case, you uh, just include uh, the base image recipe in another recipe and uh, add additional um, packages to image pre-install, like uh, GDB or LSOF or S-Trace and so on. So all variables in these uh, recipes, like BB and uh, also configuration files, um, are added to a single global namespace. <coughs> Often there is a question, why not use a single configuration file? Um, the problem is if you want uh, to build multiple products that uh, share components, then um, if we use single configuration files, then we are going to repeat ourselves. This is the problem, and uh, that is why um, this modularity, and that is why uh, we have to find a suitable place for that. 
uh, in the long term, we want to reduce the number of configuration files and to organize them in some way. Maybe we need a GUI. Um, we have to get more experience with that. So adding packages, basically you should have a known um, project uh, or application repository and it should be already Debianized. Um, after that, you create a three-line uh, recipe for that, um, referencing the URL of the repository and uh, source revision, and then you say inherit dpkg, and this uh, makes uh, the whole thing uh, built. For now, um, we have to list the dependencies um, of Debian packages uh, here in the recipe again, but uh, we are looking for solutions how we can add building uh, DSC files uh, directly from a Yocto, from a Bitbake backend. And finally, you have to add uh, your application package name to image install in your um, image definition file. Also, uh, please note that uh, we don't port all um, Yocto tasks uh, here. We also, uh, we only um, have those that we need and at the time um, those are fetch and build. So a board definition, it's called machine. Um, in Yocto consist of settings that are necessary uh, to bootstrap Debian um, and get a root file system. So what you have is a reference to, to the machine file. Um, it's QMO ARM is really the name of the QMO ARM conf referenced below. And you have distro um, Debian Jesse. It's also a reference to a file um, that uh, defines the Debian Jesse distribution. And distro arch is ARM HF, um, which is uh, the architecture, Debian architecture name. And in QMO ARM, you just list the kernel image and init or day image uh, and pre install packages uh, that are necessary to debootstrap um, the root file system. And here is the example of uh, distro definition files so that you can um, uh, install the right suite with right components from the right app source. And afterwards configure it with uh, a certain configure script if you need to create some device nodes uh, and stuff like that. So to, for effective uh, collaboration, uh, we want to organize codes, code in uh, different directories because once we put them into these directories, uh, it's not finished. Uh, in a few years, we have to update these files with newer versions and uh, this is where layers um, are useful. So we define different layers uh, usually by vendor or by uh, company or by division and define split also products in their own layers uh, so that uh, every layer has more or less its defined um, life cycle and update cycle and so on. Layers may be uh, basically in one central repository or distributed in uh, different uh, Git repositories. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can use uh, tools like Repo, for example, to, to clone all repositories. Uh, what is important uh, is that uh, these um, layers um, have only to be listed in the bblayer.conf file um, and that's it. So you have, after you create these layers, you uh, list them in, uh, in, this, in this file and they are then included in the build. So one common use case um, is 
overriding an upstream package, for example, with a custom configuration um, or modifications. So a quick and dirty way um, for doing this is just uh, to hack this in image recipe. The right way uh, that we follow is to fork the respective package, but of course this means that uh, as soon as you have uh, one line difference in init tab, you have to fork the whole uh, sys5 init. So our vision is to have a recipe that can override uh, the default package with uh, some patches and uh, then um, to and then that it will create the source package um, and the binary package for that. But this is not uh, implemented yet. So this is for the reference. Uh, we can return to them if there are questions regarding that. So what's new currently in the development branch? We have added, we, we started with ARM support, now we added uh, Intel support. We had some issues with Jesse that are now fixed. And we also, after we have um, done uh, U-boot and in general bootloader installation manually in the recipes, uh, we are looking at uh, image creation with uh, WIC, which is Yocto's tool um, to create images. Um, it, it has some, a number of uh, dependencies and we are looking what would be the right uh, way to um, incorporate that in um, ISR. And we also have numerous documentation fixes. Okay, so to summarize, uh, we tried to combine the best options that we see um, and uh, Debian provides a stable tested distribution with uh, security updates. Yocto provides BitBake which is very flexible and efficient. We provide the template repository that you can use right off and you can use it as a template and modify um, for your own product. And the whole thing, after you get running, uh, you want to work it fast. And this is uh, last and not least why we um, developed this system. Here are the references. So we are on GitHub. Manual is in the wiki. And for mailing list, uh, we decided to abuse uh, Debian Embedded for now till uh, we have great, much, much greater amount of, of traffic and uh, we could move anywhere else. So well, that's it for today. Any questions? Yes. Um, in Yocto you have the possibility to create an SDK. Um, can you do that too or don't you? Yeah, well, actually, uh, ah, sorry, um, in Yocto, um, there, there is a possibility to generate SDK. Do we do this or don't we need this? Well, I personally uh, don't need this, but um, what you get is actually in the first step, uh, you get a complete build root that you can use in a, in a virtual machine or you can use it in a change root environment. So uh, we could provide a bit bake shortcut uh, to uh, tar this uh, so that it is uh, like an SDK that I can hand over with one file to a developer um, and uh, that they can use it. Basically, technically the answer is we provide it, uh, but not in the form that uh, people are used to in um, Yocto community, we could think about um, adding this syntactic similarity so that people uh, find stuff where they uh, expect it uh, to find. The same is also for uh, dev shell. So you basically change root into build root and uh, you get the development shell. Yes. Uh, generally, we are using GPS, uh, but we have a package, it's called uh, QM Axel, 
because we have problems with, with the performance. Don't you have the same problems? Well, um, actually, as we started, we used uh, the question was, excuse me, uh, whether we um, uh, had problems with uh, QEMU performance uh, for building uh, kernels and whether we provide a QEMU Axel package uh, to mitigate these problems. Um, the history is we started with cross compilation um, in a uh, native system. So the build truth was not really an ARM truth started under QEMO. It was a native uh, Intel uh, change root. And it, it ran natively, but you had to cross compile your kernel package. So this means uh, basically you don't want to reuse your Debian kernel uh, in your product. Uh, that is why you can hack a small uh, kernel package for you and cross-build it. This is not a big deal. So this is how it started. Now we had a hard requirement from a customer who didn't want any cross-compilation uh, in their system and uh, they uh, insisted that uh, we ship this with, with an ARM uh, build change route uh, that is built uh, under Camo. And uh, this is where stuff uh, gets slower. So uh, to answer your question, uh, today we haven't looked at uh, QEMU acceleration. Uh, we might look at that. Uh, however, if you need performance, then uh, my suggestion would be to go to uh, native compiler to, uh, to get it cross-compiled. Yeah, that, that's quite similar to what QEMU Axel package does, because it register the bin FMT formats. So for most of stuff we are running QM and R, but for compiling and linking we are running like first compilation. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of things that you get to speed up. Okay, so we have two minutes or well, sorry, it's oh. switch. Okay, okay, so we, we don't have uh, time, but uh, I'm available here. If anyone has questions, then uh, please contact. Me.